Let's take a look at the very beginning of the Canadian Electrical Code. The Canadian Electrical Code is called Canadian Electrical Code Part 1, Safety Standards for Electrical Installations. It's published by the CSA Group and the Standards Council of Canada. When you first open up the code, it looks like this. And it's nice to open it sort of as a PDF so that you could have sort of bookmarks down the side here and very easily reference these sections. If you purchase a book in a hard copy format, that is uh, handy for, uh, for some situations, but it is much harder to go to and from all of the tables that are necessary when you're using the Canadian Electrical Code. Down at the side here that you see that there are uh, quite a few sections before you even get to um, section zero. Of note here is a revision history, just so that you know what is uh, what is new on uh, in your new edition. The uh, added or changed elements also have a little triangle beside them throughout the code so you can easily see them. Uh, it talks about the Committee on the Canadian Electrical Code Part 1. Um, uh, it, it talks about a few of the committees and the subcommittees. It starts with a preface talking about um, uh, what this codebook is for. And what we don't want to forget that just before Section 0 is where we can find these metric units. And if we click on them here, uh, so often we will have to... Um, uh, convert between SI units and what the book calls previously used unit, which uh, is often sort of uh, what is has been previously used in the field, or it is a um, uh, an imperial unit. So uh, this is just a chart. It could be, be found readily anywhere else or in any app uh, to convert some of our standard SI units since this um, this Canadian Electrical Code book is in SI units. So that's a helpful chart that is on page 33 in this edition, uh, it's before section zero. Also of note uh, is uh, a little bit of a, a table that you could find elsewhere as well. Um, and it's just a handy table that is gonna give you uh, the, the trade sizes and uh, uh, the, you know, the fitting sizes in inches and in, um, in SI units uh, are the metric units uh, for uh, common common uh, size conduit and tubing. There are quite a few reference publications, uh, some you know standard test procedures, safety codes, etc., that need that are referred to throughout this book, and those are also found before section zero of the electrical code. And then we get into section zero, section one, section four, section, uh, sorry, section zero, section two, four, six, eight, et cetera. They go up by twos. And uh, in this video, we're just going to talk about section zero. So we just talked a little bit about the layout of the book. Um, what is this book for? This book has a, a, a set of a comprehensive set of rules for the installation and maintenance of electrical equipment, and it is published to help ensure electrical safety. Uh, the rules of this entire book uh, uh, are divided into two groups, sections zero through 16 and 26 are called the general section. So these are your general rules. So again, not really that convenient. It's zero to 16. And then we skip all the way to 26. Those are the general rules, the general sections of the Canadian Electrical Code. We, in this video, we're gonna talk about section zero. But before we even talk about section zero, let's talk about how the code is, how code book is laid out. There are two different types of sections. There are general sections, and then there are all of the other sections. So the rest of this huge book is everything else. So um, if it is in zero to 16 or 26, those are our general rules. However, the supplementary sections take precedence over all those general sections. Now, in some cases, you're in a supplementary section and it refers back to a general section. So it's a complicated book, but we have to know 0 to 16 and 26. Might as well memorize that. Those are our general sections. So let me give you an example here. If section 4 permits aluminum conductors, no problem. Section 4 is all about copper conductors and aluminum conductors. 
But if you look in section 32, section 32 rule 100 prohibits the use of aluminum conductors in fire alarms. So you can ask yourself, can aluminum conductors be used in fire alarms? Well, section four says, sure, you can use aluminum conductors, but section 32 is a supplement which takes precedence over all of those general sections. Section four was a general section. So no, we cannot use aluminum conductors in fire alarms. So that's how this book is laid out. It has its general rules, then it has all of the supplements to those. And those rules are gonna look at tables. There are lots of tables after these rules. The rules all refer to these tables. Now the tables could sit in there with the rules, but it would be a really big, thick book. So in general, the rules, uh, are uh, sort of condensed into words, a few diagrams, and then you can you have to go to the tables to do your calculations or to find the data based on the rule. It's placed there so that you don't fill up with the rules with a lot of diagrams. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So let's say we go to section four, for example. Again, I'm just talking about the layout of the Canadian Electrical Code. So if we're in section four, section four says, okay, so for, um, for uh, section four, rule four is the opacity of wire, wires and cables. So this particular uh, section is about copper. And it says that uh, we, um, uh, we, we, we need to go to table two. Um, and, and here's table two. If I click on it, it goes to those tables. Now what I've done, is it's or uh, what I did is I just clicked it, clicked into this table section over here. So in my bookmarks, I see all these tables, and that's table two allowable ampacities for not more than three insulated copper conductors, not more than 5,000 volts and unshielded. Da -da -da -da. So, but now section two, I mean, table two is going to refer to some subsections for more its, its uh, derating factors in, in tables 5a. Here's some, some correction factors uh, if uh, like for uh, certain types of insulation. So that's 5A. Now I could have found it this way at the side, table 5A, uh, but I found it off table two. I can click on 5A. Um, if I wanna see which rules these are applicable to, look, there's our rule four, uh, section four, rule four. Uh, the Ampacity of Wires and Cables. So it's quite a nice book when it is set up uh, in this, this soft copy form uh, so that you can you can uh, plug through those in, in the ways that you need to um, in various ways from the bookmarks or from the text. So that is how the book is laid out.